In this video, we will learn more about laminar and turbulent flow. Let's investigate the flow over a very thin, flat plate at zero angle of attack. And more in particular, we are interested in the drag of the plate. Isaac Newton already formulated an equation for the shear stress. The shear stress tau is mu times the velocity gradient. Mu is the dynamic viscosity coefficient, or in short, viscosity. So for the shear stress on the surface of a flat plate, we are looking at the velocity gradient near the wall at y is zero. And here you see the boundary layer velocity profile with the velocity u varying from zero at the surface to the undisturbed free stream velocity v at the edge of the boundary layer. Let us define the local Reynolds number. It is defined as rho times v times x divided by mu, with x running along the flat plate starting at the leading edge. When the fluid starts to flow over the flat plate, it begins to form a laminar boundary layer. The streamlines are smooth and regular. The flow moves in neat layers. At some distance from the leading edge, the character of the flow has changed into irregular, random and chaotic movements. This is a turbulent boundary layer. The transition process from laminar to turbulent flow is a, is a complicated mechanism of, of growing disturbances in the flow. And we will talk about that later. First of all, let us look at the development of the boundary layer thickness along the plate. With his boundary layer theory, Prantl, together with his former student Blasius, was able to simplify the Navier-Stokes equations in such a way that they could get analytical results for a laminar boundary layer. From this theory, we find that the local boundary layer thickness at a station x from the leading edge is equal to 5.2 times x divided by the square root of the local Reynolds number. So, starting at the leading edge of the plate, the boundary layer effect develops parabolically with the square root of x. Now let us look at a flat plate with length l and the width of one meter. At distance x from the leading edge, we have a small strip of the plate with length dx in flow direction. The total force on the entire plate is the pressure force plus the friction force. Since the plate is flat and very thin and under zero pressure gradient, we have no pressure forces. The friction force on the element dx is tau times the area, which is dx times one. The total skin friction drag on the plate is the integral from the leading edge to the trailing edge, so from x is zero to x is l, of tau times dx. From laminar boundary layer theory, can, we can find that the local skin friction coefficient, defined as the shear stress over the undisturbed dynamic pressure, is equal to 0.664 divided by the square root of the local Reynolds number. So the skin friction coefficient decreases with increasing distance from the leading edge. To calculate the entire aerodynamic force, we must integrate. Before we do that, let us first have another look at the Reynolds number. The Reynolds number, based on a length L, was defined as rho times V times L divided by mu, right? Well, the density and the dynamic viscosity, or, or just viscosity, are both defined by the same quantities of the fluid, for instance, temperature and pressure. So we can define the kinematic viscosity nu by the viscosity nu over the density rho. And then we can simplify the Reynolds number to V times L over nu. At the low Reynolds number, we have viscous flow, and the effect of friction in the flow is high. It decreases with increasing Reynolds number. Now back to the flat plate. So dF, the friction force on the flat plate is the integral from zero to the length L of cfx times q infinity times dx, since this was tau w. We know that cfx is 0.664 divided by the square root of rex. Together this forms the integral from zero to L of 0.664 times q infinity times dx divided by the square root of rex. 
we assume that Q infinity is constant, so the F is 0.664 times Q infinity times the integral from 0 to L of dx divided by the square root of R x. Now R x has a component of x. We can write that as the integral of dx divided by the square root of x, but then we have to divide the other part by the square root of the undisturbed velocity divided by the undisturbed kinematic viscosity. The integral from 0 to L of dx divided by the square root of x is 2 times the square root of L. So we have df is 0.664 times q infinity divided by the square root of v infinity divided by the kinematic viscosity times 2 times the square root of L. And this is 1.328 times q infinity times L divided by the square root of v infinity times L divided by the kinematic viscosity. Now, you may recognize that what is under the square root here is of course something that has to do with the Reynolds number. So it is in fact 1.328 times q infinity times L divided by the square root of REL, so the Reynolds number based on the flat plate length. Now let us define the skin friction drag coefficient. Cf is the drag force divided by q infinity times s. Now this is df divided by q infinity times l times 1, because we have a width of the flat plate of 1 meter. Now if we write Cf with the result of the drag force calculation, then we get Cf is 1.328 divided by the square root of REL. So we have found the skin friction coefficient on a flat plate is equal to 1.328 over the square root of the Reynolds number based on the flat plate length. This equation is only valid for low speed, for incompressible flow, and it is reasonably accurate for high speed subsonic flow. Unfortunately, there is no exact solution for the turbulent boundary layer. But experiments showed that the boundary layer is much thicker than for the laminar case, and that the skin friction coefficient inversely varies with the Reynolds number to the power of 0.2. So if we put the two together, we see that the friction coefficient in a turbulent flow is much higher than in a laminar flow. A turbulent flat plate will have a much higher total skin friction drag.